So in this video, we're going to integrate DNA Framework into our ASP.NET Core web server. Uh, we already make use of it in the Facetta Word WPF application, uh, but now it's finally time to integrate it into the ASP.NET Core site as well. Uh, the main benefit being that we can have dependency injection and shared logic and things throughout the applications. Uh, the trick with ASP.NET Core is it already uses the same thing. It uses the built-in .NET Core service collection, service provider, the whole mechanism for dependency injection is, is baked in already into ASP.NET Core. So I've updated DNA Framework to support integrating and effectively piggybacking off the exact same service collection and um, you know the startup, uh, so it's nice and easy. Uh, so it's simple to do. Uh, first thing I'm just going to do is update all the references, make sure everything's up to date. So just right click on Core um, and we'll go to Updates. Let's just update all the packages. You can actually see DNA Framework here updating to 1.0.6. So you want that version at least. Uh, that should update. And then the same for the web server. This one doesn't have DNA installed yet, but just update anything that's out of date. Just accept that. And then we'll just first make sure everything still builds once it's, you know, things have updated. Uh, and then we'll add a reference to uh, DNA framework into the application. Sometimes this takes a while to do an update. Um, just hangs for a while sometimes. There we go. Uh, Control Shift B, let's just build, make sure everything's good. Yep, so we're all good, everything's built. So now in the Facetta Word web server project in Nougat packages. Just search for DNA. Uh, we're getting there now, we're nearly at the top. So you can see here we've got dna.framework.aspnet. So if we install that, this makes use of DNA Framework here. So you don't need to install both if you're gonna install the ASP one. This is just a small wrapper to add ASP.NET integration. So we install this one. And then once we've done that, we can go now to uh, if we go to program, it's this simple. So in here, you can just do dot use, uh, use DNA uh, framework, and then just control dot to prompt to include the namespace. Uh, and that will add DNA framework. And you can look at the source code for this. Uh, but what that does is then hooks into um, ultimately the configure services to then inject um, all the same stuff that DNA framework does when it's independent. Uh, so that'll hook everything in that you need. If you want to do a self-configuration uh, like the existing one of Facetta Word, you can pass it in uh, an action uh, that is given a parameter construct. So this will now be add DNA framework and then configure framework. And by default, we'll add file logger just like we did in the Word application. So it's just construct.add file logger and then control dot to find the namespace. And then that's where you can now daisy chain and you know add whatever you want and inject any services. Um, if you want to bake down to the actual services, you can just do dot services dot add and then do your normal uh, bog standard service collection adding. Uh, alternatively, these are specific to, in a sense specific, these are the way that we typically add them in the .NET um, the DNA framework, and it's using a framework construct, which simply gives you access to configuration at an early point uh, or environment and configuration. Um, you can just do it in your startup class in configure services. If you add services here, then they're going to be available in the DNA framework now anyway. So we don't take away anything from, you know, you don't require to do anything special. You simply add DNA framework here. Anything you add here will now be inside of the service collection, just like anything else, it perfectly blends into the ASP.NET Core dependency injection, but it basically gives us now the benefit of being able to access dependency injection anywhere in our applications using the DNA framework. So that's really all there is to integrate into it. Uh, and then in order to link in with uh, the actual service provider at the point of doing configure, where we typically there's IOC container thing here, uh, just get rid of that and use DNA framework and this all this does is basically sets a service provider in the DNA framework to match this one so just do app dot 
uh, use DNA framework and control dot and include the namespace. And that's basically all there is to it. Um, so now we're fully integrated into DNA framework. And behind the scenes, obviously, I've, I've done all the code to do that in DNA framework, but that's the point. You don't have to be concerned with that kind of code. So what we want to do now is strip out the old IOC container. So I'm just going to start by going to the IOC container, getting rid of that completely. Um, and then we've got some dependency injections here that we want to maintain. Um, so we will change this class. I think we'll just call it DI for dependency injection. And this will really be specific to um, this web server's DI. So this is very specific to, you know, injections that are only in the server. Um, and then here, uh, we will now be framework control dot. Uh, and then you've got framework dot provider now. Uh, and then dot get service. So it's changing just to using now the DNA framework. Uh, and now we just rename the class to DI. So that's now that bit done. Uh, this bit now installed, we don't need uh, because that's already handled in DNA framework for us, setting the configuration. Uh, that is done in the use DNA framework. Um, what else have we got? So in startup, um, we don't need that code. We've now I've got to patch these. So this is the point where the service collection is still available, which means the service provider isn't yet available. So in here, you don't do framework um, control dot. You don't do framework dot uh, provider uh, in order to get that um, because the provider isn't available yet, um, you know, to get things. Um, so instead, you do framework dot uh, construction to get the currently being built construction and then dot configuration. So anywhere we currently have in the setup IOC container dot configuration, just change to framework dot construction dot configuration. Uh, I've also noticed, let's make this text a little bit bigger as well. There we go, a lot bigger. Um, so that's the framework construction. Um, after we've done that, right, so that's everything in startup. Um, so we have that integrated, we've got the startup, we've cleaned up the IOC stuff. Um, and now I think really all we've got to do is patch up anything that breaks. And then effectively we've just changed over from um, the IOC model uh, to DNA framework. Uh, so again now here, IOC container. So all of these now are in framework control dot uh, framework dot or DNA dot uh, framework DI as the static class. And this is like our DI class, but this is the core one where we expect these are potentially available because these are in core the cells. So these are things that we know about. So I've made a framework DI. So it's a nice quick way of accessing um, set things that we know could exist anywhere. So you could do dna.frameworkdi.configuration. Instead, what I like to do, uh, so you can just type configuration, is go to the top and just type using static dna.frameworkdi. And then we'll copy that line because we'll make use of that in wherever else it breaks. But now, instead of even having to have IOC container, you can just have directly, like configuration. And if you press F12, it's, it's pulling it from this. So now you can just type like configuration or logger and directly make use of any dependency injected items. So the same here, ifc.container can go um, and we'll make use of that. Uh, email template sender is in DI because it's in the actual um, specific to the web server one. So instead of framework DI, it's in DI, which is obviously this implementation. Uh, so that's fixed that bit. Um, IOC container, same again. Delete the configuration. Paste into there. And last one, IOC is now just DI. And that's now built. So hopefully we will have um, DNA framework integrated. At the point of, say, using DNA framework here now, let's just then say... Uh, logger, and we should be able to do that if we 
scroll up and add the namespace um, into there. And now we can just type logger.log, um, or rather we'll do logger.say log critical. Uh, okay, so I just had to uh, pause and swap to the source code because I've realized I've pushed and missed one line of code in the DNA framework. So this will go to version 1.0.7. Uh, it wasn't adding the default services, so we weren't getting the default logger. Um, so that's all fixed. So I've just quickly jumped on that to, you know, show in the video this is what will happen. So I just changed one line of code, uh, and now we've got the log. Um, so that's now run. The website should then spin up, uh, which it has, and we'll just get the Hello World website spinning up. Uh, so there's that. But what we should also notice now is we've got a log here. So this is now output the... Uh, you know, to the text file log. So this is the DNA framework logger now doing this work. So we've got the text logger. And now anywhere in the whole application, uh, as I mentioned, you can now do framework uh, dot provider, and that's now your service provider. And now you can get any any service you want. Uh, and, you know, there's your dependency injection. Um, or you can use the shortcut for, uh, like, framework DI, uh, and then get specific injected things. Um, and you can also now use the DI helper class we've got to get the others. So this is how you can nice and easily now get access to all of the uh, dependency injected um, projects. So that's all there is there. Um, we're not making use of that here now, so that can go. Um, so now we fixed that one. Um, let me just delete the references to these. Um, change the... Um, Nougat packages back, get them installed. Uh, and as I mentioned, this will now be 1.0.7 uh, uh, when the video is out, uh, not 6 due to that one line um, issue. Uh, I missed out one line when I did the code, so you won't see that issue. Um, so that's that reinstalled. And then the same in core. Let's just manage Nougat packages, browse and install the DNA framework one. Uh, install, okay, uh, and then check we build again. Yep, so that's all that done. So that's all there really is to getting dependency injection into the ASP.core website now. So now we've got DNA framework in there, which is nice and useful. Um, as always, if you want to support me, I've got a Patreon page, patreon.com um, forward slash angel6. Uh, any comments or questions on the video, as always, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Uh, and hopefully yeah, this video is useful.